So one side wants to talk, the other doesn't. A bit like frenemies, I guess. That's also what Western media is calling the new fault line in West Asia. Saudi Arabia versus the United Arab Emirates. It's not just, not just a battle of countries, it's also a battle of personalities. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan. Both are better known by acronyms MBS and MBZ. So what are they fighting about? Leadership of the Arab world and the Gulf. Now don't think of this as a conflict. It's more of a rivalry and a personal one at that. Both these rulers have an interesting past. MBS is all of 37 years old. MBZ, the Emirati, is 62 years old. They started off as mentor and protege. MBZ groomed the younger Saudi ruler. He lobbied for him in Washington. But now the dynamic is changing. Let me tell you what happened in December last year. MBS gathered some journalists in Riyadh. It was supposed to be an off-the-record briefing. But his statements have now leaked. And what did MBS say? He accused the UAE of backstabbing Riyadh. He also threatened to blockade them. His exact words were these. It will be worse than what I did with Qatar. Now, this is big. It's like Joe Biden accusing Justin Trudeau of betraying him, or Rishi Sunak threatening to blockade the US. Saudi Arabia and the UAE are longtime allies. They share historical and religious ties. So why the fallout? Reports say MBS and MBZ have not spoken to each other in six months. We have a war going on. Oil prices are so volatile. Iran is capturing tankers. So you would assume the two leaders will be in contact. But why aren't they? Because differences are rising, and three of them stand out. One is financial interests. The UAE has long been the commercial hub of West Asia. It's more liberal than Saudi Arabia, so all the Western companies were based in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. MBS wants to change that. He wants these companies to shift to Riyadh, to Saudi Arabia. How does he plan to do that? By boosting Saudi Arabia's soft power. He bought multiple football clubs in the West. He also bought, brought Western superstars to play in domestic leagues. It's all part of the appeal. And for MBS, this is do or die. The world is gradually shifting away from oil. Technology is the next big thing. And on that, the UAE has a head start. If Riyadh does not catch up, it could lose its regional leadership. So that's one point of contention. The second big difference is on oil. Saudi Arabia has aligned itself with Russia. Together, they have cut oil output to keep prices up. Reports say the UAE does not agree with this. They gave in only after intense pressure from the Saudis. But that may not happen every time. You see, until now, only Saudi Arabia had the power to dictate oil prices. Their output alone could change prices. But now the UAE has reached similar levels. So they too can dictate prices by varying output. The third difference is on foreign policy. Both sides have different interests in Yemen. Saudi Arabia and the UAE are fighting Iran-backed rebels in Yemen. But for MBS, it's a war that he started. For MBZ, the stakes are much less. Last year, he signed a deal with the Yemeni leadership. It permits the UAE to intervene in Yemen and its waters. Naturally, the Saudi leader, MBS, did not like it. He felt like he'd been one-upped. So he responded with diplomatic moves of his own. First, he normalized relations with Iran, and then he welcomed Syria back into the Arab League. And our reports say he's keen on recognizing Israel too. It's a game of geopolitical chess, really. The question is, how does it end? MBS has reportedly sent a list of demands to the UAE. But will MBZ accept? He's apparently warned the Saudi leader about his rogue actions. He thinks MBS is taking way too many risks, like getting closer to Russia or striking a deal with Iran. It's hard to say how this rivalry will unfold in the next decades. The Saudi leader is still in his 30s. He will be ruler much longer than MBZ. Plus, Riyadh is the custodian of Islam's holiest sites. That position is unshakable. The chances of this rivalry becoming violent are remote. But you can't rule out outside interference. Just think about it. Two regional powers locked in a cold war of sorts. It's the perfect chance for powers like China to meddle to maybe take sides and make it worse. Either way, this is a rivalry the whole world will watch out for, including folks here in India. We have excellent ties with both these leaders, MBS and MBZ. A united Saudi-UAE alliance is in India and the world's interest. As long as they have a working relationship, the world should not mind.
It's best if the rivalry is limited to Manchester City versus Newcastle United. Beyond that, it can be worrying. After all, it's not like either of them will be voted out.